up, everybody? This is George I. Courtright back for another A Mad Week. It is Saturday. Yes, I'm a little late. Why? Because that's what the fuck I felt like doing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Little chap. Um. Yeah, life is uh, some bitch, and since this is my show and I'm the only one on it these weeks, uh, I can do it whenever the fuck I want. And today, right now, is when I wanted to do it. So I did want to keep continuing the show, so I did a late show, which is today, and I wanted to bring you some information that you probably already knew, but hey, I'm going to give you my point, uh, give you my information, uh, let you know what I think about this shit. There's several different things uh, major in the headlines. Let me go. You know, I usually start things by telling you what I've done, what I've been up to. So what have I been up to? Uh, first and foremost... The major thing was the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, I was scheduled to go to the game that was on Wednesday, uh, which was the wild card game, the one game playoff, which decides who will go on. It was the Arizona Diamondbacks versus Colorado Rockies. I had tickets. A buddy of mine was going to go with me. We went to the stadium, was about to go into the stadium. Boop, boop. Hold up, sir. Boop, boop. Hold up, sir. Uh, come to find out, my dumb ass bought the wrong tickets. Um, I bought the tickets for October 9th. So that's the, this coming Monday to the second game. If there was a second game, uh, I bought tickets for that. Not knowing. So I'm a dumb ass. I'm at the fucking stadium ready to go in. Find out wrong tickets. Damn. So, uh, me and my buddy end up going to a uh, local restaurant and, well, it's not, it's a tilted kilt. It's the place with the, you know, little young girls with the boobies hanging out in the flannel or whatever. So, we went there, had some wings, watched the game, had a good time anyway. And I will be going to the game on Monday, which is against the Dodgers. So, hopefully... The uh, Diamondbacks can, you know, win or something. They lost their first game last night. That sucked. Um, but hopefully we go uh, well into the playoffs so uh, City of Phoenix can have a parade for um, one of their sports teams, you know. I wasn't here last time. Or was I? I can't remember. I don't think I was. I don't think I was here last time the Diamondbacks uh, went to the World Series and won the World Series. So it'll be cool to, you know, be a part of a city with a championship sports team. That'd be cool. Never experienced that before. So I would love to do that. That's what I did. Oh, uh, and last night, me and wifey watched Girls Trip. Um, this was the movie with like Queen Latifah, Jada Pinkett uh, Smith, and they went on a girls trip and all that shit. It was actually pretty good, you know. Uh, it was similar to you know stuff like Wedding Crashers and you know those type of movies, the adult humor type shit. Um, it, it was cool. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I looked up the numbers. It took about twenty million to make. But it uh, brought in over a hundred million in the box office and in sales and shit like that. So um, that that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that that movie made that much money. And like I told Wifey, most likely there's gonna be a sequel. Where are they gonna go? Usually, uh, shit like that they take it to Europe and shit. Just like uh, National Lampoon's uh, Vacation or whatever, they had to go over to Europe. So I'm thinking they might go to Europe. Probably, they're going to go out of the country somewhere. They ain't going to keep it in the United States for the sequel. That's just me and what I think. I'm not sure. I'm just blowing smoke. That's what I do, though. Once again, this is George I. Court, right? I am doing A Mad Week, my weekly show. Check out uh, previous shows on YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel, Magic Entertainment. That is M-A-D-G-I-C, Entertainment. Please go check it out. Check out uh, my shows uh my videos and all that stuff so that's uh, that's what i'm gonna do uh for what the fuck has happened in my life i don't think i did anything last weekend i think i just chilled i tend to just chill a lot these days you know just chilling 
But um, let's go on to the news, man. Man. You know, uh, no reason to fucking save it for the end or anything like that. We'll just get right into it. This motherfucker in Las Vegas on Sunday uh, from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay. Knocked out the fucking window. Blah, 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 blah. Just shot into uh, the Route 91 Harvest Festival. Uh, Jason Aldean was on stage, you know, giving his performance at the time. And the motherfucker from the 37, 32nd floor started shooting. You know, rapid fire into the crowd. Uh, 58 died, uh, 500 others injured. Whether it was from bullets, uh, you know, directly from the bullets. Or, uh, you know, just a stampede. People trampling over each other. You know, just uh, frantic shit. Um, supposedly one of the biggest massacres in the United States in a, for a while. Um, it's, this is pathetic, man. Uh, the dude is Steven Paddock. Uh, he was 64 year old motherfucker. Um, uh, they say he had no uh, criminal history, so they they still can't find a motive except that uh, he hated uh, g the government. Which I don't know why you shoot at a damn country festival if you hate the government. I I don't know uh, what was how how those two link, but that's what they say. He wasn't uh, for the government. He hated the government and shit. Uh, one of the things that some people do not probably know is that he, uh, prior to, um, this past Sunday, he had scheduled, uh, hotel rooms in other locations, uh, around other festivals. One was actually Lollapalooza in Chicago. He had booked a hotel near, um, that spot. He had not actually gone to there. He didn't check in, but, uh... During the investigations, they found out that he did schedule to uh, attend the area where another festival was. And uh, that was one out of two other festivals that he was looking at going. So he he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was trying to do. And he was going to do it regardless. Um, after investigations, they also say that uh, he had 23 guns in his room when they found him. Uh, before police stormed in, he killed himself, so they say. I don't mind if uh, police went in, found him alive, and still shot the motherfucker dead because they knew he did it. It was, it was you know, open and shut case, Johnson. Uh, it wasn't like, oh, let's fucking, try, you know, put him on trial, put him in prison. No, this motherfucker just took all these lives. He doesn't deserve to be walking amongst us. He doesn't deserve to be breathing our air. Take him down. So whether he killed himself or police killed him, thumbs up for me. Um, when they found, uh, inside his room, they found 23 guns and thousands, thousands of rounds. Um, they also said that he had explosives, uh, like chemicals and shit in his car, uh, the explosives and chemicals in his car, uh, uh, as well as six, uh, over 1600 rounds in his car. So I don't understand what exactly he was trying to do. And, uh, another thing that came out is that it looked like from, you know, his plans and all that stuff that he expected to be getting away. Uh, it didn't seem like he was acting like he was trying to get away, but it looked like he expected that he was going to, you know, make a dash for it and try to get away. Uh, but good thing he didn't. Motherfucker's dead. The motherfucker's gone. Good for him. And I'm talking about uh, Stephen Paddock. Uh, for those of you who have just joined, I ain't just talking about random motherfuckers dying. I'm talking about the motherfucker who took lives in Las Vegas. Uh... This is very unfortunate, you know, uh, for those of you who know me well, know that I love me some Vegas. Uh, this ain't gonna stop me. Uh, crazy motherfuckers around this world ain't gonna stop me from doing shit. I'm a motherfucking man. I do what the fuck I want when I want. And this motherfucker doing shit like this, I'm throwing out a lot of motherfuckers, I can tell. Just because this man uh, did this, just straight evil, I, it's not gonna stop me from doing things. Uh, I just don't understand why people choose to take lives like this, choose to injure other people like this. There's mothers, 
uh, fathers uh, that have died. There's sons and daughters that have died. Friends, family, and all that stuff have died uh, in the hands of this man. And it's fucked up, man. Uh, some people are like, hey, uh, if, if there was stricter gun laws, uh, gun control, this shit wouldn't happen. I understand what you're trying to do. This man had guns, and if there was other gun rules, you know, certain gun rules, this shit may have been prevented. But I haven't heard anybody say any kind of plan that would actually make sense. You know, uh, we have the right to bear arms, and the reason that we have that right is so that the only people with guns aren't the government. So if something were to happen, you know, shit like, you know, over in... Germany back in the day, you know, uh, the government get out of fucking hand and think they just, you know, filling themselves and want to control everything, you know, people can fucking rebel, you know, they have guns, you know, government has guns, of course, government has big guns, tanks and all that shit, but at least civilians can have something to, you know, have on their side, so that's why we have that right to begin with, uh, to just say, oh, nobody should have a gun, no, that's not gonna work, that's not gonna work, uh, stricter uh way uh, stricter laws or stricter rules stricter means in order for people to get guns uh should be in place there are already strict rules and this dude had no uh previous background uh for uh, uh previous criminal background so he would have went through it anyway he had 23 guns most of them i think they said maybe one was not registered so he did everything and it's people like that that hey you can't control that shit crazy is fucking crazy you know he wasn't uh medically uh listed as ill um he didn't have a criminal background so he had the right to have these guns uh the guns that he had yes you can alter them to make them automatic weapons but they don't come as automatic weapons you buy them and people can alter them yes there should be a harder means or way to make these guns uh into automatics it should be tougher to do but i guess you probably can go on youtube and make a regular rifle into a, an automatic uh weapon uh but what, what you know what somebody needs to bring up a way that we can actually you know have the gun control, you know, I, I haven't heard shit, though, you know, so, saying that, oh, stricter gun laws will prevent this, I'm not sure that that's possible, you know, you can't stop crazy, crazy is fucked up, you know, there's people right now who shouldn't have guns, that have guns, illegally, how the fuck are you gonna stop that shit, and what are you gonna say, oh, hey, everybody with a gun, turn them in, you think everybody gonna turn those fucking guns in? No. So therefore, you know, good people are gonna be without guns, and evil people will have the guns. So how the fuck are we supposed to defend ourselves? So, uh, what is gun control gonna do? I don't fucking know. Somebody say something that, you know, I'll agree. Uh, if, if you give a fucking good idea for it, I'll fucking stand by it, but I just haven't heard of it yet. So, unfortunately... That Las Vegas shit is fucking terrible, man. I hate hate when that shit happens. You know, every, all my fucking shows, I say hopefully nothing happens so I don't have to talk about it on my show. But shit like this happens, man. And it's still a mad week. A mad week. So unfortunate for uh, the people who uh, lost their lives in Las Vegas past weekend, man. I hate it. Oh, <laughs> shit. Let's move on. Let me let me search. Uh, move on to some brighter shit, you know, because it, it, it ain't all good this week. This week ain't been that fucking good, man. Uh, let's see. All right, let's talk about racism and all that stuff. There was a nice little march in D.C. this past weekend. Uh, the past weekend, where um, the march for racial justice and the march for black women. Uh, there's two different rallies. They come together. In Lincoln Park in Washington, D.C. Um, it's just 
you know, uh, people of all colors, all, you know, uh, races and all that shit coming together, showing love for each other, you know, seeing that there's a problem in the United States and, you know, willing to march and show unity. And that's a cool thing that's going on. Uh, there's a lot of things dividing us as a country, dividing us as a people, races and all that stuff to see things like this happen out there in the world. It's cool. So that, that's very uplifting. I'm not the type that'll march for things, but, you know, love goes out to and support goes out to the people that do. You know, that's what they want to do. I support that. That's cool. You know, I appreciate that. Uh, let's see, what else that's on a little bit of a happier note? Um, <laughs> don't have that much happy news. Don't have that much happy news. Um, oh, speaking of, you know, um, the rights for women and all that stuff, uh, Saudi Arabia will allow women to drive starting in June of 2018. As of right now, women aren't allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia, so they will be changing that. Um, one source says that it hopes to increase women participation in the workplace. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> so, hey, you can, you can drive now. But you better get your ass to work. That's what they're trying to say. Well, that, that's me, you know, spinning shit a little bit. You know, uh, that's what they want women to drive so that they can actually work in the workplace. That's what I saw in the news, man. You know, one step at a time, I guess. Um, I still see that they're being forced to, you know, cover up their stuff. Cover up their faces and stuff, you know. Um, one step at a time, you know, it's 2000. It's going to be 2018, and they're just now doing that. A little bit behind. A lot of bit behind uh, the curve when it comes to that shit. So, I guess one step at a time, man. You know, I, I don't know why shit like this hasn't swept across the globe yet. You know, why everybody isn't getting the same respect, getting the same equal opportunity, you know, whether uh, gender or color and all that stuff. So, saying that, Still talking about women and all that stuff. Uh, most of you guys have, may, have, may have heard about this whole Cam Newton uh, situation where he is uh, at the podium at a press conference, you know, after practice and all that stuff. And he, a female reporter asked a question to him uh, referring to um, uh, one of his wide receivers running routes and all that stuff. And he looks... Shut up, dogs. Um, he looks at her and laughs and says, it's funny that, um, you know, to hear that from a female. Uh, one of the questions, the question that she asks, is funny uh, hearing that type of thing from a female. I will add the video. I know you take a lot of pride in seeing your receivers play well. Devin Funches has seemed to really embrace the physicality of his routes and, and making getting those extra yards. Does that give you... A little bit of an enjoyment to see him kind of truck sticking people out there. It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. Like, it's funny, but uh, fun is coming along, man. We gon' we gonna. This is a big game for him because of you know him being from Detroit, and um, you know I know he wants this win extremely bad, and just to see his growth over the years, completely different player. I mean, not just on the field. And, uh, you know, I told him and Benji today, you know, those, those guys' preparation has been different this year. And, um, you know, credit the coaching for it, um, you know, and, and, and just moving forward, you know, we're going to expect those same things. Um, this got a lot of new, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of attention. Uh, women got pissed off. Uh, a lot of other uh, sports people got pissed off. Everybody's saying, getting all pissed off because they find it offensive. They find it degrading to women and all that stuff. And I understand. You know, uh, I'm going to be on both sides on this one. I absolutely understand uh, why they're uh, upset that uh, he's doing this, you know, the lady is a professional. The reporter was a professional. You know, she's doing her job. He's seen professional reporters before He talk that are female. He's talked to female reporters before, you know, to sit there and, like, do, 
minimize what she's doing because she's a woman. You know, that's uh, that's that's pathetic if you see it like that. That's pathetic, you know. Uh, and at first, at first when I heard this, I'm like, what the fuck are they tripping about? And then, I, you know, I sat there and thought about it and thought, hey, what if there was a, a bunch of, you know, uh, white dudes, you know, sit there, you know, sitting around talking. I come and talk you know, to them and can handle and be in the same conversation to them, talking about stock, the stock market and shit. And one of them says, oh, you know, it's funny hearing stock market tips from a black man. You know, I'm just not used to that shit. That you know, you gotta put things in perspective. You know, from your point of view. You know, just because I'm not a woman, I don't understand. Yeah, you know, I don't know how it feels to be a woman in that situation. But I can uh, tell you how it feel being a black man in that situation with you know a bunch of white dudes saying, "Oh, it's, it's funny that you know you're saying stuff like that." So I get it. I get the where the offense is. You know, I understand that he did not intend it to be that way. You know, and as when I first thought of it, I didn't see it as that way. It's like, ha ha. It's it. You know, it, it's kind of funny hearing you know a woman speak about you know intricate routes. You know, a very detailed part of football. You know, it was shocked the fuck out of me as well, and I would think it was funny. If I was standing somewhere and there was a group of women talking about playing John Madden football on PlayStation, how often does that fucking happen? So if you hear that, it's like, huh? <laughs> whoa, you know, that, that's, that's, that's different. It's different. I'm not trying to, you know, degrade them. I'm not trying to put them like, oh, you can't be doing that. No, it's not about that. It's like, oh, that, that's, that's new. That's new. You know, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not hating on it. I'm just mentioning it. Uh, the problem uh, with Cam Newton is he's a fucking public figure. I say crazy isn't what you think. It's what you do. And you're a fucking public figure. You should be used to public speaking and shit. You should know that shit like that shouldn't be said. said. And that's the action. It's all right for you to think it. Some people were like, oh, you shouldn't think that shit. Bullshit, man. Everybody thinks some things, you know. Uh, because, you know, everybody thinks something that might not be right, but you just think it. The actions that you do behind it are what makes you crazy or what makes you immoral or what makes you just a bad person. You know, thinking that, like, oh, shit, you know, that, that's crazy, but not saying it. That's that's different. Um, well, Cam Newton ends up making an apology I'll play the video. After careful thought, I understand that my word choice was extremely degrading and disrespectful uh, to women. And to be honest, that was not my intentions. And if you are a person who took offense to what I said, I sincerely apologize to you. Uh, I'm a man who tries to be a positive role model in my community and tries to use my platform to inspire others. And I own, I, I take ownership to everything that comes with that. And what I did was extremely unacceptable. Um, I'm a father to two beautiful daughters. And at their age, I try to instill in them that they can do and be anything that they want to be. Uh, and the fact that during this whole process, I've already lost sponsors and countless fans. I realized that the joke was really on me. And I've learned a valuable lesson from this. And to the, the, the young people who see this, I hope that you learn something from this as well. Um, don't be like me. Be better than me. And to the reporters, to the journalists, to the moms, super moms, to the daughters, the sisters, and the women all around the world, I sincerely apologize and hope that you can find the kindness in your heart to forgive me. Thank you. All right. So that is another thing that fucking happened. Uh, hopefully everything blows over on that one. He made an apology. Uh, I know his intentions weren't weren't uh, to hurt, offend anybody, but these days it's not about your intent; 
it's about the action themselves and everybody needs to be a little bit more and it's gonna be more video uh, with this one instead of just me talking if you want to go see it either wait till I post this uh, show or you can go on YouTube and look it up but there was this soccer game over in France where this dude made a fucking goal and was going towards kind of like a fucking Lambo leap in uh, football but he went over to the section of the crowd and the fans were like oh shit oh shit that's what they do over in France they oh shit oh shit and the fucking front rail I shouldn't be laughing but I am cuz yeah you know, I'm an asshole uh, fell over and like this flood of people just fell off the damn uh, stands and shit because the barrier broke, you know, because they all like started flooding down to like come congratulate and cheer with this motherfucker who just made the goal. That shit fell over. Watch the video. Uh, you can do it. Check it out on YouTube if you're not watching this. Uh, record it. Oh. Like I said, it ain't that much good news, man. Speaking of falling, uh, ASU student fell from a balcony and dies. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because I'm in Phoenix and ASU is kind of right down the street, man. Uh, there's this uh, big apartment uh, building, I guess you want to call it, called the West 6th. And a student, age 24, fell from the 20th floor balcony they haven't uh confirmed if there was alcohol involved but it was saturday morning at 3 a.m falling off a balcony i'm thinking there's alcohol involved you know i i i've been i i used to drink in college i still drink now not as much as i did but uh it's all about you know taking care of yourself being with the right people and just Drinking responsibly. You know, some people don't understand that, but... Dude, that's the main thing. Yeah, you can't be a fucking dumbass and do stupid shit because stupid shit happened. And motherfuckers dropped from the 20th floor. 20th floor. Ugh. So that's unfortunate for friends and family of that person. I ain't gonna put the name out there because, one, I didn't write it down. Two, that's just not my place to put the name on that one. But... Somebody's name I will say uh, is a little bit brighter, but Christopher Williams. A lot of you uh, don't know who Christopher Williams is. Christopher Williams was light-skinned due to New Jack City and uh, the singer of one of my favorite songs from that soundtrack. Actually, my favorite song from that soundtrack and just a, a song that I love. Don't wake me, I'm dreaming. I fucking love that song. I fucking love that song. You know, he was with uh, the Uptown Records or whatever back in the day. And it was, uh, I know a lot of ladies liked him. He was like a light-skinned black dude and, you know, had that, that curly hair or whatever. You know, kind of I'll be sure looking motherfucker. Well, his ass got arrested last week for uh, petty theft. He went into a Kohl's. Went into a Kohl's store and put a pair of $100, $100 JBL headphones in his bag and tried walking out with them. This is a man who had fame, was in movies, in music, and now he's stealing $100 headphones from Kohl's. They wasn't even beats. So this it was fucking crazy to see that. Uh, not sure what's going to happen with him. Uh, he was released. You know, it's petty fucking theft, so he's going to get a slap on the hand. Don't do that shit again. Fine, all that stuff. You got a record now. You know, don't do that shit again. $100 headphones. I don't I don't know what he's doing right now, but it, it don't look like he's doing well if he's still in $100 headphones. All right. Uh, speaking of more people in the mu music industry, um, go from a blast from the past to something somebody who's current. 21 Savage. Uh, I never listened to it. I have no idea about 
any song that he's ever fucking done. It's one of those new age rappers that I don't pay too much attention to, but he's in the news a decent amount. Uh, he's supposed to be this hood ass rapper, and you know his name is Twenty One Savage. So that pretty much tells you, you know, the type of music that he's making and all that stuff. Well, he's dating Amber Rose right now. You know, he, everybody knows who that chick is. You know, used to date Kanye, uh, has a baby by Wiz Khalifa and all that stuff. Well, she is one of the people who put together the slut walk that they, you know, do every year. The slut walk. What is the slut walk? The slut walk is supposed to be taking back the name of a slut, you know. It's supposed to turn slut into a good thing, you know. You shouldn't be... Uh, slut shaming people. You shouldn't be talking about uh, women who uh, have as much sex as they do. You shouldn't be calling women sluts, hoes, and all that stuff. So they have a walk to do that. I get what she's trying to do. I think I talked about this in a different uh, show. I get what you're trying to do by putting it out there, you know, that women should be treated as equals. You know, men can, you know, have all the, this the sexual lifestyle, and women uh, are viewed differently if they have the same. You know, that shouldn't happen. I get that. But naming it the slut walk? Come on, man. Come on, man. You could do better than that. Don't name it the slut walk. Man, name it something else. I ain't gonna give you no names right now because I can't think of any. But uh, anyways, 21 Savage and Amber Rose are dating. She holds the slut walk, and 21 Savage is getting shit on the internet because he's at the slut walk. Supporting his woman. He also has a sign saying, uh, I'm a, I'm a hoe too. I'm a hoe too. I get it. You out there supporting your woman and all that stuff. Cool. I'm a hoe too. That means everybody, you call, you're calling everybody a hoe. <laughs> you're calling everybody at the damn walk a hoe. You're calling your wife a hoe, or your girlfriend a hoe, and then you're calling yourself a hoe. All right, cool. So, um... I don't, I don't get why he's getting shit from people for supporting his woman. What what are you supposed to do? Not go? You know, your wife is putting on, uh, wife or girlfriend is putting on an event and you just stay at home? No, he's just supporting his woman. So I think people on the fucking internet are just fucking stupid asses and will do whatever the fuck they want just to tear people down, just to make them feel happy. I don't even know how they feel happy about telling somebody else they a big fuck up. But anyways, I don't even know why I said that story. It was just something I heard and I thought it was fucking stupid. You're talking shit about a man who's supporting his girlfriend? Come on, you ain't got shit else to do? Alright. Uh, I don't think I said this. Uh, Tom Petty died. October 2nd in Santa Monica, age 66. Tom Petty. Uh, music dude. Oh, yeah, we, we still on music. Tom Petty dead. Uh, he went into cardiac arrest. Uh, and he died in Santa Monica. He had songs like Free, Free Fallen, uh, and You Don't Know How It Feels. Uh, what is that? I Won't Back Down. That song. Um, so, rest in peace, Tom Petty. Oh, still in music. Still in music. Go, go from down to back up. I guess uh, Luke Bryan, Katy Perry, and Lionel Richie will be the judges on American Idol. Uh, Lionel Richie, I'm a fan of Lionel Richie, so it'll be interesting to see you know his thoughts on this American Idol. But I ain't watching no American Idol. Uh, it started getting shitty. I used to watch that shit, but it started getting shitty. Wasn't interested in it. But uh, that is in the news here. Um, let's see. Uh, last thing on the front page. Please don't sing. Hey, Brad, I'm gonna sing. This is my show. I can sing if I want, man. My my wife loves it when I sing to her. She loves it. She absolutely loves it. So I'm gonna keep singing, man. I got the I got the vocals. You you know I got um to the Hollywood round in uh, American Idol when I tried out a few years ago. And you know that. You know that, right? And anybody who knows me is that. You know that was a lie too. So, come on, I I got them vocals. I know I don't. Whatever. Uh, but anyways, let's go to uh, something new. 
Something new, man. Uh, NBA All-Star Game. The 67th NBA All-Star Game that's going to be in Los Angeles at the Staples Center. It's going to be a new format. Usually it's East, uh, the, East Coast, the East teams, the East Conference versus the West Conference. It's not going to be that anymore. That is fucking cool as fuck. Uh, they're going to have the leading vote getter from the East and the leading vote getter from the West, they're going to be picking their own teams out of the remaining players uh, that have been uh, voted. It's going to be like street ball and stuff. Like, oh, you know, I want you, I want you. It could be, you know, just all mixed up from West Coast, uh, East Coast players. That's going to make it a little bit more exciting. I probably watch this year just because it's going to be something different. You know, uh, the All Star All Star Weekend hasn't been the same for me. You know, for a while anyway, it just seemed lame. The game doesn't have any fucking uh, like defense in it. But I think it's it's a newfound uh, way to you know get people motivated about it. Another good thing about that is that uh, each team will be picking a charity charity that they're playing for. So that's gonna be fucking cool as fuck. It's still gonna be you know twelve players on each side. You know, the fans, players, and, like, NBA people are going to be picking out who the total 24 people are. But the two captains are going to be picking, man. Going to be picking. I would love to see the picking order, who gets picked first, second, third. Most importantly, the last motherfucker is the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th picks. Or the 24th pick person ain't getting picked. They just get in place because nobody else, the other person didn't pick them. He's just getting placed, so I would love to see who that 24th person is. Uh, so that's something new. Um, and to stick with the NBA, it has come out. The NBA sent out a memo to the players reminding teams of the rule that requires players to stand for the anthem. So I know there's been uh, different things going on, like Steph Curry and uh, LeBron James talking shit uh, to Trump and all that stuff. But uh, the president sent out a memo saying, hey, it's in our rules that you must stand uh, for the national anthem. You know, none of this Colin Kaepernick supporting and all that stuff. Um, how, hmm, I really don't know how I feel about that just yet. You know, uh, as I told you a couple games ago, um, I knelt during the national anthem because I was pissed off at what I was, what I was hearing around me when uh, a lot of the fans booed the kneeling that was at the Monday night football game. Uh, this past weekend at the game, uh, I conveniently went to the bathroom during the national anthem. Um, I did take my hat off while I was sit standing at the urinal, but uh, I was in the bathroom, so... I stayed in the locker room If for some of you. <laughs> for some of you, I uh, stayed in the locker room. But that's what I did. Uh, how do I feel about the NBA saying, hey, make sure y'all stand now? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll probably bring it up in a different show. Let's, let's see how they do. You know, let's see if the players do something or just have something uh, that they will do to show unity. Is that what they're doing now? You know, a lot of locked arms in the NFL and all that stuff. There's still people kneeling and all that stuff. Uh, I, I want to see how this progresses with the NBA. I want to see how it goes, and I'll, I'll get back with you. I'll get back with you on my thoughts. I'll get back with you. All right. Um, oh, last thing on the front. O.J. Simpson is free. And the first thing he ate was McDonald's. Ooh, ooh fucking well. Oh, fucking well. But... He ain't shit. And talk about more ain't shit motherfuckers. Let's talk about Trump. Trump and his fucking ain't shit ass. Punk ass Trump. Uh, Trump told Puerto Rico uh, officials on Tuesday they should be very proud that hundreds haven't died as they did in a real catastrophe like Katrina. You know, there sometimes you, like oh, it just pisses me the fuck off, man. Talk about instance, uh, being insensitive, being a fucking dumbass prick and all that stuff, saying stupid ass shit. Why is our president always in the fucking forefront of the motherfuckers saying stupid ass shit? You know, there was no need to compare Katrina to Puerto Rico. You know, of course, you know, Katrina seemed as if it was a, uh, you know, worse cata catastrophe. But to the Puerto Ricans, no, it fucking wasn't. 
Katrina was over here. Puerto Rico is here. This is my home. So to tell them that they, you know, what they went through wasn't shit compared to something else, that was very insensitive, very fucking stupid, stupid, and just fucking, it's just bullshit. Our president is a fucking dumbass. I'm going to say it. Put it out there on the fucking internet. Whatever. Hate me? Don't hate me? Whatever. Support me? I don't care. It's just, fact is a fucking fact. You know, uh, he further went on and told... <laughs> Told Puerto Rico, I hate to tell you, and I'm quoting on this one, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you, you've you thrown our budget a little out of whack because we spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico, and that's fine. We've saved a lot of lives. This man is fucking dumbass. This man is a fucking dumbass. Why? I, I don't un understand people who still support Trump. I still don't. I don't understand it. All right, there was a couple things that he said over his term uh, during his campaign that I was like, oh, all right, that makes sense, that makes sense. But for the most part, he ain't nothing but bullshit. So it just pisses me off right now. Um, and, yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. Uh, dude. Uh, and... The last thing, we're going to keep talking about dumbasses and assholes and all this shit. Uh, go from Trump being a fucking asshole like he is to motherfuckers just being assholes. Lil Wayne did not perform at a concert in South Carolina because he refused to go through a fucking uh, security search. What? Come on, man. There's people that paid all this money to come see you fucking and you can't just go through the fucking security. You shouldn't have anything that you should have a problem with anyway. You know, uh, people on the same uh, show, including Tory Lanez, 2 Change, Cardi B, they went through the same shit, and they did it, and they performed, but you couldn't? You're a little bitch, Lil Wayne. you got to make the little bitch of the week this week, Lil Wayne, just like Trump, little bitch. All right, that's all I got for this week, a oh, mad week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for everybody who started to watch me. Thank you for those of you who are watching this on the backup. I will be putting the videos in, um, so watch it when it comes up. For those of you who are watching um, live, go and watch the recording for the, the parts that you miss, and I will have the videos, pictures, and all that stuff in the editing. Thank you for tuning in. This is George I. Courtright. And this has been a mad week. Like I'm got like I try to say each week, man. Y'all need to fucking be cool out there. Everybody needs to fucking love one another, uh, chill with one another, and just fucking show love to each other and not be dumbasses hating on other people's for whatever you fucking hate on other people's. Or just stop being fucking crazy and taking lies and injuring other people's. Be at, be nice. Do something nice. Show love. Peace. That's what it looks like. I'm out. I want to show you places we can see. No stress, no responsibilities. Smooth melodies and good company. Good weather, forever 85 degrees Get classy, I wanna see a dress, no jeans Good food, yeah, I wanna treat you properly Properly, find a property with privacy And honestly, I hope you just vibe with me Damn, I think I hit the lottery Yeah, I'm hoping you'll be open, so honesty I'm sick of all these exes, yeah, they lie to me So I think I met a lady, damn, finally <laughs> Let's climb mountains, my beauty, we survive